And now it's time for the original audio drama, Quantum Leap, The Impossible Dream, Need You Now, Part 2. And in this episode, we have a special guest star, Jennifer Runyon. You might know her as Peg Stratton from Genesis. Yay! So uh, thank you, Jennifer, for being a part of the show. That is so cool that she's participating in our audio drama. It's awesome. What an honor. And she was good. Of course she was good. She's still my favorite character on the show so far, so. Is the waiting suite ready? Dr. McKenzie is standing by. Neurological link is active. The imaging chamber is powered up. We are good to go. Well then, this is it. Let's change history. Three, two, When you leap, the game is always to figure out who you are, where you are, and why you're here. I looked around and I could see I was in the living room of a house. The TV was on, but I didn't recognize the program. I was alone in the room and there were no mirrors that I could see, but I was holding a phone in my hand, so I tapped on the camera app and flipped to the front facing camera. Wow, I'm a teenage girl. And I have a text. Send the money by tomorrow, or your photos will be on the internet for all to see. Oh boy. What if you could leap into the past, still facing mirror images that were not your own, still driven by an unknown force to change history for the better, and still guided by a hologram that only you could see and feel. But now you are also able to leap home. We've solved the problem. We live the impossible dream. Shelly, what are you doing with my phone? I, sorry, I picked it up by mistake. Give it here. Okay, but you just got a very disturbing text. Oh, so you're reading my text now? I said I'm sorry. I thought it was mine. What's this about pictures? Are you in trouble? It's none of your business. I want to help. Are you being blackmailed? Who by? I don't know who by. Oh, Shelly, I feel so stupid. What happened? It seemed okay at first. He was just a boy I met on Facebook. He called himself Marty, but I don't think that was his real name. We became friends, I guess. He was always texting me. Every day, there'd be some new text. At, at first, they were nice. You know, hi, Carmen. It's Marty. Great to see you. And it was great. And then... Carmen, it's okay. You can talk to me. Right. Because my little sister is going to solve everything. That's what I'm here for, I guess. He talked me into sending some pictures. The sort of pictures you wouldn't want made public. And then everything changed. That's when things got nasty. He started demanding money. He said if I didn't pay, he'd publish the pictures. Well, I didn't pay. And then he put them on Flickr. It was a harmless one, but he still has the rest, the ones that are not so harmless, and now he's set a deadline. How are you supposed to pay him? Couldn't he be traced by the money trail? PayPal. I, I suppose he could be traced, but he still got the picture, so I can't even report it. Oh, Shelly, what am I going to do? Show me how you contact him. Why? I might be able to help. You. Trust me on this. I just want to make sure I've understood this. Amber has leaped back to the year 2010. Yes. Into the life, but not the body, of one Shelly Cartwright. Yes. History records that Carmen Cartwright, Shelley's sister, took part in a series of minor robberies shortly after this leap date. She was eventually caught and went to jail. Ziggy says it's almost certain that that's when Amber needs a change. It's all very noble. But why should my company finance that? What's in it for Stockwell Industries? 
Peter, I can't make financial decisions for you. We change history for the better, but only in small ways. I know it looks like keeping one teenager out of jail is not very important, but that's not seeing the big picture. Think about what's happening here. In our waiting suite, right now, there's a girl from 10 years in the past, and if Dr. McKenzie gives the all clear, you might even get to talk to her. Ignoring Amber, ignoring the effect that we may or may not have on history, for that alone, for the ability to interview actual people from the past, that's got to be worth it. Ryan, we've got a fix on Amber, and an update on the mission. It's about cyberbullying. Cyberbullying? Ziggy says Carmen was being blackmailed by a cyberbully, and that's why she went down the road of crime. If we can stop the bullying, that would probably change things. I lost a niece to cyberbullying. What happened? She, uh, I don't really know. She was being abused online. She committed suicide. Back then, the authorities didn't take online abuse seriously. So nothing was ever done about it. I'm sorry to hear that. Ryan, the imaging chamber is fired up, and Ziggy has downloaded all the data to your handling app. We're ready. Go talk to your wife. I gotta go. Barbie will look after you until I get back. No problem. Good luck. Hey, honey. Yes, I am alone. Thanks for noticing. Oh, right. I guess it could have been awkward to answer in company. And now that we've got that out of the way, hi, honey. Here's what we know. It's 2010. You're Shelley Cartwright, age 15. Shelley turns out all right, but her sister doesn't, so we think you're here to save the sister. That would be Carmen Cartwright, age 17. Ziggy says you're here to... Stop a blackmailer. I figured that out already. Right. But Ziggy doesn't know who the blackmailer is. Nor does Carmen. But I do know he calls himself Marty and how to contact him online. All right, show me. Barbie, watch this. Pay attention. Okay, here we go. That was Amber. She's doing great. Barbie, did you figure it out? I did. The perp is Gary McFarlane, age 56, an accountant for one of the local insurance firms. I can even tell you his home address. How? His account details were posted on Pastebin, along with millions of other account holders, when Bennett Sharp was hacked in 2017. Unlucky for them, lucky for us. Well, that's good. It gets better. He lives locally. Local to where Shelley and Carmen live. I mean, Amber could visit. Okay, I'll go tell her. Shelly, I've decided what I'm going to do. What would that be? I'm going to pay the money. Oh, Carmen. (sighs) Well, what else can I do? We found the blackmailer. His name is Gary McFarlane, and he lives in Dawson Road. That's just a half a dozen blocks from here. You have to get over there. How much time do I have? I have to pay by the end of the day. Or he's going to publish those pictures tomorrow. She probably should never have taken those pictures in the first place. Carmen, you did nothing wrong, except maybe trust someone who turned out to be a sleazeball. Thanks, sis. I know you mean well. But I have to do what I have to do. Do you have enough money? Yes. I'll be fine. She doesn't. Ziggy says this is probably where Carmen's life of crime starts. You have to stop this. I know. I have to go. I have to do what I have to do. Good luck. I'll scout ahead. Ziggy, send her me on Gary's house. This is the place. I can see Gary now. He's at his computer. Will do, Barbie. Sometime I forget I can walk right through his desk. Oh my word, he's cataloging more pictures, all of young girls less than half his age. But I don't see Carmen. Ugh, I don't want to look at this. I'm looking away. This isn't something I should see. Barbie. Lawrence would have a field day with this guy. He's a sleazeball, all right. In fact, he's worse than a sleazeball. He's got dozens of victims, maybe more. Oh, boy. Quantum Leap, The Impossible Dream was created and written by Jill Arroway. Starring Tawny Finneran as Amber Lee and Juan Morrow as Ryan Lee. Special guest appearance by Jennifer Runyon as Carmen Cartwright. With Hayden McQueenie as Peter Taylor and Suzanne Smiley as Barbie Sutton, Need You Now Part 2, was edited, cast, produced, and directed by Albert Mark Burge. Narration by Suzanne Smiley. 
Quantum Leap The Impossible Dream is produced in association with the Quantum Leap Podcast and is a Barron Space production. And that is part two of Quantum Leap, The Impossible Dream. I hope you liked it. There's a couple more parts in this story. I'm actually a really big fan of our audio drama. And I have i don't think I've ever listened to audio dramas before. I listen to audiobooks, But this and the one The Signal had was the only audio dramas I listened to. So, And they're both by Jill. So, <laughs> She's amazing. Tawny's doing a great job. Everybody involved is really doing a great job. Even Heather is doing a great job. I looked around high and low for an artist for our cover art for this new project. And no one stepped up. <laughs> so I said, Heather, you have to draw. So it's not perfect, but actually, I'm actually kind of proud of the... I love it. I think it's really good. I drew it all out of nothing. I don't know. <laughs> I came up with it all, but it actually kind of turned out better than I thought it was going to. I am loving where this audio drama is going. Yeah, I really like it. I think it's cool that it adds an element to our show. I love Jill's writing, so I'm, I'm a big fan.